This is going to be called Keep Your Head Above Water or How Not to Drown, Sink or Swim. Number one, don't drown in your sin. First Timothy 6, 9 says, But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. The verse mentions temptations. And foolish and hurtful lusts, these things will lead you to the snare of the devil, which can put you in a position to drown. He has lost people in a snare, and if they don't come to Jesus Christ, they're going to drown in destruction and perdition. How can he do these things to the flesh of a Christian? This is because the Christian continues in sin, he'll be turned over to Satan for the destruction of the flesh. Notice that word destruction. If you give into temptations and lusts, then God will you then God will turn you over to destruction of the flesh to Satan, and Satan wants to pull you under the water and cause everything you have to sink, just like he will literally try to drown Israel in the time of Jacob's trouble. If you look at Revelation twelve, fifteen and sixteen, it says and the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. And the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth. They would drown if they didn't get help from God, just like you will drown in your own sin if you don't get help from God. You see, the, open, the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood so that they didn't die. And you need to help from God to get out of that sin situation you're in unclean spirits in your life will cause you to drown in mark nine twenty through 22 it describes a devil possessed young child and the unclean spirit many times casts him into the fire and into the water the forces of darkness will drown you in darkness and many people are up to their neck in pornography or alcohol or drugs they are struggling to keep their head above the water the best thing you can do if you're about to drown in sin is to call upon God. Psalm 69, 1 through 5 says, Save me, O God, for the waters are come in into my soul. I sink in deep mire where there is no standing. I am come into deep waters where the floods overflow me. I am weary of my crying. My throat is dried. Mine eyes fail while I wait for my God. They that hate me without a cause are more than the hairs of mine head. They that would destroy me, being mine enemies, wrongfully are mighty. Then I restored that which I took not away. O God, thou knowest my foolishness, and my sins are not hid from thee. Your sins aren't hidden from God, and they will drown you if you stay in them. Don't talk to anyone else about your sin. Talk to God and get it fixed. The same way God saved you when you were born again is the same way you can also... Come to him and he can save you from your sin. If he can save your soul, then he can get you victory over those pet sins in your life. Uh, 2 Samuel twenty two seventeen says, He sent from above, he took me, he drew me out of many waters. Many are doubtful that God can give them victory over sin, but he can save you from drowning just like he did Peter. Matthew fourteen twenty nine thirty one says, and he said, Come, and when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him, and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? The lost world loves the pleasure of sin that only lasts for a season. They will swim in this sin for a while and begin to sink especially when God pours out his wrath on his enemies. In Psalm sixty nine twenty four, it says, Pour out thine indignation upon them, and let thy wrathful anger take hold of them. A born-again believer won't feel the wrath of God. He will chasten his children. God will chasten a child of God, but we aren't appointed to wrath. And the lost, however, will feel his wrath, and one day they will either sink or swim. Although you are saved, you may be sinking in your sin. You need to swim in the sense that you need to feel sorrow over your sin and cry unto God. Look at verse, or Psalm 6 and verse 6. 
It says, I am weary with my groaning. All the night make I my bed to swim. I water my couch with my tears. So be in so much sorrow that you're going to be swimming in your tears over your sin. Even during the creation, the Bible says the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. When you call God on the on your knees, you read the Bible, call on God about your sin. The Holy Spirit of God can fill you up and give you victory over sin. Genesis in chapter 1, the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. God warns you about sin in the Bible, and He warns you about the consequences of sin. God warned Noah about the coming flood of water. He let him know what would be the consequences of not escaping the water. And the Bible says Noah was saved by water, meaning the waters never touched him. Noah built an ark to escape. Just like we need to heed to what God says about sin and flee temptation because God has also given us a way to escape. A lost person who drowns in their sin, never coming to Jesus Christ for salvation, will die in their sins. They will feel the wrath of God in their never dying soul. And men alive at the second advent will see Jesus Christ as he comes back in anger. And the Bible describes his breath as an overflowing stream. Isaiah thirty twenty seven and 28 says, Behold, the name of the Lord cometh from far, burning with his anger. And the burden thereof is heavy, his lips are full of indignation, and his tongue is a devouring fire, and his breath as an overflowing stream shall reach to the midst of the neck, to sift the nations with the sieve of vanity, and there shall be a bridle in the jaws of the people, causing them to err. Those who die in their sins will drown in their sins as they sink into the lake of fire. Revelation 20 and verse 15 says, And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. In the lake of fire, it is literal fire. This is where you get the saying, you're in hot water. The pain will be unbearable. The smoke of your torment will ascend up forever and ever. It is everlasting fire. Imagine calling for help underwater. You can't hardly talk underwater. Imagine calling for help in a lake of fire. You can, but no one will hear you, and no one can help you. The only ones who will hear you are the only ones who are crying out to God themselves. You drown in your sin. You drown in your separation. Hell is the place where God's anger is kindled, but it is separation from His love, His mercy, and the Holy Spirit no longer draws you in hell. Remember, there are only two options. You can sink or you can swim. If you're lost, you have to choose between rejecting Jesus Christ and believing on Jesus Christ. The Christian has to choose between living for Jesus Christ or living for the flesh. The Christian is going to end up swimming regardless of how he lived his life here. However, when you make it to eternity, you will come out with more rewards if you live for God. Jesus Christ paid for our sins once and for all. If you believed on that, then you're not going to sink when it comes right down to it. You're going to heaven and you've escaped hell. But you can sink while you're here in the flesh. You can ruin your testimony. You can ruin your life. You can lose everything you have. And when I say every Christian is going to end up swimming, I mean that literally. There is going to be a rapture which takes place and all born-again Christians are going to be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. We're going to meet the Lord in the air and go through the second heaven faster than the speed of light and then straight through a body of water above the solar system. This is the deeps. There is water up there above the second heaven. Psalms 148 and verse 4 says, Praise Him, ye heavens of heavens, and ye waters that be above the heavens. And this is the sea of glass referred to in Revelation 4 and 15. The Christian is going to make it out okay when he comes to his eternal destination. But he can get himself in a mess in the flesh while he is still here. The lost person can get himself in a mess here because the way of the transgressor is hard. And if he rejects Jesus Christ and dies in his sin, then he is in a mess for eternity. A horrible thing is a lost person having a horrible life here, and then dying and going to hell for the rest of eternity. 
If you're lost, if you're not saved, then you need to come to the Lord Jesus Christ today. 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4 says, For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that He was buried, and that He rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. And this is the gospel which saves. Paul says you have to receive it. And Paul says this is what saves a person. And the gospel is that Jesus Christ died. He died for you. He was buried and he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. You can believe it's true because the scriptures say it. The scriptures are perfect. God preserved his word. It's 100% true that Jesus Christ died. He died for your sins and that he was buried and rose again the third day. If Jesus Christ died, then how did he die? He died by shedding his blood. Colossians 1.14 says, In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. He was buried and he rose again the third day. The resurrection proved he was God. That's why he's a perfect sacrifice. He was sinless. He was the virgin-born, sinless Son of God, and He died on the cross for your sins, not just everybody else's, but for your, each individual sin that you committed. And you have to accept that payment for sin. Rely on what Jesus did on the cross. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ as your payment for sin. That's salvation. Not just believing with your head that it happened and that He existed but actually putting your trust and your faith on what he did to save you and get you to heaven. Acts 16.31 Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Romans 10.13 For whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. God will save anyone who comes to him wanting to be saved. It doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter how many times you've rejected him in the past. No matter what vile, abominable sin you've committed, God will save you if you realize you're a sinner. If you realize you're on your way to hell, which you are if you're not saved. Because Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death. So you're going to pay for your sin. It's going to be eternal death in the lake of fire. The book of Revelation says death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. So right now, if you died in your sin without being saved, you would go straight to hell where you'll be burning in fire, just like the rich man. It says that he's tormented in the flame, and he begged for a drop of water on his tongue. You will be suffering in the same fires that he's suffering in, and then one day you'll be called up to the great white throne judgment. God will judge about how bad the lake of fire is going to be for you. And then you'll be cast into the lake of fire where the devil and his angels and the antichrist and the false prophet will be. And that will be your home for eternity. But if you realize your guilt of sin and you turn to the Lord Jesus Christ and believe on him and him alone to save you, and you can be saved and have eternal life. You don't get to heaven by living right. You don't get to heaven by doing good things. Romans 4, 5 says, But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. You can't work your way to heaven. You can't earn it. Jesus Christ did all the work when he lived a sinless life. And when you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, all those good works and the righteous life that he had gets applied to your record. And then your horrible, sinful record is taken and nailed to the cross and is done away with. Jesus Christ is the payment for sin and you need to believe on him today.